I think we can all agree that Mondays are the worst. It doesn't matter where you work or what you do, the start of a new week always sucks. It sucks especially if you're crawling through a freaking sewer tunnel at 8 in the morning. No, I'm not part of a sewage cleaning crew, but I wish I was. It would be way less trouble. I'm working as an exterminator, and not the type you'd expect. What I care of aren't rodents or strays, not even people. I take care of, for simplicity's sake, monsters. To tell you the truth, this morning I wasn't in the mood for work. Zero fucking percent. That's not how the job goes, though. First, you can't laze around with those... things. Give them a few unattended hours and you might look at a few dead people and... that's the best case scenario. Second, there's headquarters. If you ignore them, you wish you'd crawled the frickin' sewers. After a particularly rough patch on Saturday, I used Sunday to unwind. It meant shitty food, shitty movies, and shitty bourbon. Lots of shitty bourbon. Don't judge. In my line of work, you can use the occasional blackout. I wasn't happy when my phone woke me up at 6 in the freaking morning. Not at all. Jesus, what the hell's going on? I cursed as I scrambled for my phone. Yeah? I asked, still tired and still very drunk. Exterminator 7D11087. We have found a new signature in your area. The computerized voice of headquarters informed me. Great. We are transferring the signature's location as we speak. Our data suggests it's most likely a D-class incident. Vermin type. Immediate extermination is required. With that, the voice cut out, and a moment later my phone notified me that the signature data had been transferred. I lay on the couch, rubbing my temples, and cursed myself. Fucking hell, two incidents in three days? For another minute, I didn't move. When I finally heaved myself off the couch, I cringed at my splitting headache. A quick look at my desk told me it hadn't just been a single bottle of bourbon who'd kept me company yesterday. For a moment, the second bottle, which still contained a good third, looked almost too tempting. I forced myself to ignore it and made my way to the storage room. This place would be a witch's wet dream. Strange liquids, weird objects, old books, and God knows what else lined the cluttered shelves. It's all stuff I've gathered over the years, or that had been sent by headquarters to help me on the job. I rummaged through the contents until I found what I'd been looking for. It was one of headquarters' alchemic contraptions. I have no clue what the stuff's made from. I think it's usually used to treat mental damage. It works like a charm on hangovers, though. I popped the vial, and soon the stinging pain in my head became nothing but a slight throbbing. Ten minutes later, I was on my way. It was supposed to be a D-class incident, so I opted for a single gun, protective armor, and a few gadgets that could make your life a tad bit easier. I also got my hands on a couple of flash grenades, but I probably wouldn't need those. Still, never hurts to be prepared. The area the signature originated in was near the outskirts of town, in an old, abandoned industrial complex. Oh, now isn't that great? Can't wait to get over there. Really, I couldn't imagine anything more fun than spending my Monday morning hunting down vermin on steroids in old warehouses or factory halls. Turns out, I didn't have to. As so often, reality proved much, much worse. It was a literal shit show. As I got closer to my destination, I could already see the sewer entrance. Oh, you gotta be freaking kidding me. I cursed in frustration. I rechecked the data, but the moment I got closer to the entrance, I knew I was in the right place. The mutilated remains of some poor schmuck left no doubts. When I checked the body, I saw that half his face was gone, gnawed away to the bone. From the dirty clothes, I could tell he was most likely homeless and had made his home out here. Shit, man, why didn't you go to any of the shelters? I said before I stapled the corpse with a little microchip. It's standard procedure. When you find a corpse, or, well, what remains of it... You gotta mark it, so headquarters cleanup crews can take care of it. Leaving behind evidence is a big no-no. For a moment I stared down into the tunnel and listened, but couldn't see or hear a damn thing. Rechecking the signature data told me that there were three of the things down there, whatever they were. 
I got my gun ready, stared at the disgusting sewage for a few more seconds before I plunged in. The stink was unbearable. It smelled like feces, chemicals, and rot. After barely a few meters, I found out where the rotten smell was coming from. I also learned that the homeless dude outside wasn't the only victim. The remains of at least two, hell, maybe even three people were down there. It was hard to tell. I pushed myself past them, but wondered what I was up against. A D-class vermin type was usually nothing serious. They were creatures the size of rats, m maybe dogs. Dangerous, sure, but no problem for an exterminator like me. Those corpses, though. With each step, the tunnel grew darker. I, I felt my skin crawl. I was almost blind down here. Even worse, the tunnel was old and had deteriorated over the years. Small crevices and holes lined the sides, and whenever I passed one of them, I was expecting something to jump me. Alright, enough is enough. I'm not walking around blind anymore. I took out a small beacon the size of a tennis ball. May there be light, I said in a joking voice as I activated it. I threw it down the tunnel ahead of me. It glimmered slightly before it flooded the tunnel with light. I noticed several strange symbols on the wall to my right, but I didn't have time for some freaking graffiti. After a few more steps, I stopped. About a dozen meters ahead of me, the tunnel was encrusted by a disgusting, slimy web. When I saw it, I knew what I was up against. Oh, freaking spider rats. I knew headquarters had a specific name for them in their compendium, but I couldn't remember any of that shit, and frankly, I didn't care. What I knew, though, was that the things were usually the size of dogs. The premature ones, that is. If they were fully grown, though... Shit, this is no simple D-class incident. I might be in serious trouble. As if to prove me right, two of the fuckers popped out right ahead of me. One was small, the size of a cat, and dangled from the ceiling. Its eight legs began twitching when it saw me. The other one, however, was one nasty fucker. It filled out half the tunnel and was easily the same size as me. I held up the gun, ready to unload on the beast before they could attack. Right at that moment, I realized I'd fucked up. There had been three signatures, not two, and when I felt a sharp, piercing pain from my right leg, I knew where the third one was. Right below me, gnawing at my freaking leg. I screamed up in pain, lost my balance, and shook the fucker off. A second later, the eight-legged, furry beast propelled itself back at me. For a second, I stared at its wide-open mouth, the clawed feet, and its disgusting, bloated body. Two shots of the gun evaporated it in midair and painted the tunnel and me in disgusting spider-rat goo. Fuck! I cursed, raised the gun again, but the smaller of the two creatures was already upon me. It screeched as it jumped from the tunnel wall and lashed onto my shoulder, its long, spidery legs closed around my arm. It was about to sink its fangs into my neck, but a second before it could, I pushed the gun down its throat and pulled the trigger. The sound of the gunshot made me wince. A sharp pain cut through my ear, leaving me half dizzy and half deaf. Fuck. Way to go, you careless goddamn idiot. I shook my head and tried to steady myself, but right at this moment, the third beast crashed into me. I was thrown backward, pushed underwater, and swallowed a mouthful of the disgusting sewage. When I fought myself back up, coughing and screaming... The third one was right on top of me. A bellowing screech escaped its mouth before its fangs closed around my right arm. Pain shot through it and the gun clattered from my hand. Once more, I was pushed underwater. The thing's claws scratched over my body, tearing at the armor. But I knew it wouldn't last much longer. In desperation, I punched the thing's head once, twice. But it didn't do a damn thing. All it did was make the creature even angrier. Its jaws tightened and ground against the bone as it tore up my arm. I screamed again as I felt muscles tear and tendons tighten. If not for the protective armor, I'd have lost my arm then and there. And would soon anyway. The flash grenade erupted right above us. Thankfully, I knew it was coming and covered my eyes. The creature, though, had no clue what hit it. The tunnel was drowned in blazing white light. An ear-piercing scream cut through the tunnel as the thing finally let go of my arm. It retreated backwards, and its giant body beat the waters and the walls in a blind rage. Shit, the gun. Where's the freaking gun? I went down on my knees and scratched over the floor of the tunnel desperately. Shit, 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 come on! Finally, my hand closed around the cold, hard steel. Just as the light of the grenade waned and the thing came back to its senses, I unloaded the entire magazine into its body. It screeched once more before it convulsed and crashed down in the water in front of me. Fucking piece of shit! 
I screamed at the thing. I kicked the body again and again before I couldn't go on anymore. I stood there, panting. Then I checked my arm and saw a deep, gashing wound. It was bad all right, but nothing that couldn't be fixed. I checked my close-range scanner, pinged the area, but there was no sign of any other creatures nearby. Hell, there didn't need to be. Three had been more than enough. I kicked the thing in front of me again to make sure it was really dead, before I walked up to the slimy web. I sprayed it with a chemical solution and lit it. In an instant, the thing went up in flames. Well, that's that. Another job well done, I joked as I limped from the tunnel. I considered checking the holes and crevices I'd noticed before, but there had been no other signals. Fuck it. I pressed a few buttons on my phone to notify headquarters that the job was done. Time to send in the cleanup crews. Once I was out of the tunnel, I applied some bandages to my arm and leg. Hopefully it would be enough until I made it home and put some of headquarters' magic pixie dust on it. Well, it's not exactly pixie dust. It's a healing contraption, but it gets the job done. Got a flesh wound on your arm or leg? In a day or two, you're good as new. God knows what the stuff is, but hell, I'll take it. The moment I was home, I took off everything and went straight into the shower to wash off the stink of the sewers and the damned spider rats. God, that was enough sewer crawling for a long, long while. I slumped down on the couch, happy to go back to sleep, when my phone rang again. I stared at it. No freaking way. Another signature? Two in one fucking day? I never knew a computerized voice could sound anything but monotonous. I'm definitely not angry or frustrated. But I swear that's exactly what it sounded like. Exterminator 7D11087. The clearance you gave us could not be confirmed. Our rescan of the area proves there are still organisms present. Please return to the area immediately, and make sure you destroy all organisms, but also the nest. The creatures are multiplying as we speak. We would like to remind you that this job is of the utmost importance and requires due diligence. We would also like to remind you that none of our contraptions are for personal usage. Please find a different solution for your alcohol problem, or there will be repercussions. With that, the call ended. When the new data had been transferred, I could see at least a half a dozen new signals. By the time I got there, I knew there would be even more. Fucking shit, I forgot the fucking nest. Those holes and crevices! I cursed and threw the now-empty second bottle of bourbon against the wall. Fuck monsters and fuck Mondays. A new day on the job, a new incident to handle. This time, it was another D-class incident. But of course, things had to go down the shitter right from the get-go. Today's incident was a humanoid type. After vermin and beast types, humanoids are the most common ones. While most of them are D-class or C-class, there's one difference. Beast and vermin might be big and dangerous, but they lack intellect, brain power, so to speak. They function purely on instinct. Humanoids are an entirely different story. Sure, they might only be D-class, and sure, they are often weaker than other creatures, but those fuckers are smart, which means they are often hard to kill. Most of them are creatures that barely resemble humans. They are often nothing but twisted hunks of flesh that walk around on two legs and hide in the gutters or abandoned buildings. Those are the easy ones. Things get troublesome when they mingle, hide in plain sight, and take on the guise of a normal human being. Guess what I had to handle today? Today's signature was located in the middle of an apartment complex. When I saw it, I frowned instantly. Well, isn't that fucking great? I cursed to myself. Sure, if I was lucky, the fucker might hide in a basement or an underground garage. <sighs> Who am I kidding? When was I ever lucky? No, I was sure today's job would most likely be trickier. If you're hunting down a creature in an abandoned building, or hell, the freaking sewers, you can go in guns blazing. If the fucker mingles, you gotta be clever and handle the job with finesse. Two things I was severely lacking. To sum things up, today was another shitty day. The first thing I needed to solve was how to enter the building in case the creature was hiding in an apartment. You can't just wave your gun around and tell people their neighbor has been replaced by some supernatural creature that needs a few more breathing holes. 
After some deliberation, I went with a plan that was simple enough even for me. I'd pretend to be a handyman, tasked with checking the heater system, the pipes, or God knows what. Once that was settled, I printed out a fake repair bill. Headquarters had provided me with an entire database just for these kinds of trickier incidents. An old boiler suit above my protective armor completed the disguise. My equipment today was a little different from usual as well. As I said, I had to be clever and discreet, and I fucking hated it. Almost on instinct, I reached out for the stack of grenades in the back of the storage room. I caressed one of my little friends before I put it back with a sigh. Not today, lovely. After that, I picked up a silencer from my trusty gun, and after a few seconds, I grabbed one of the tactical combat knives. Sometimes things could get messy. And sometimes you wouldn't be able to use a gun, especially in close-quarter encounters. The moment I arrived in the area, I hit up my close-range scanner. Now, where are you, you fucker? Against all odds, I was still hoping to find it in an underground area, but of course the odds were against me. Fucking great. The creature was hiding in one of the apartments. On the third floor, to be precise. When I tried the front door, I found it locked. No surprise there. I stared at the bell system for a moment before I shrugged and pressed a random button. I kept ringing for what must have been a full minute before an angry male voice answered. Yeah, what the hell do you want? Hello, sir, I said in my friendliest and most upbeat of voices. I'm here for a scheduled repair in the apartment of Mrs. Matthews. I've got an appointment with her right now, but there seems to be a problem with the door opener, so if you could be so... I didn't have to go any further. I heard a string of mumbled curses before the door was unlocked. Heh. Easy as pie. I congratulated myself. I made my way inside, up the stairs, and entered the third floor. There were about a dozen apartments, so I hit up the close-range scanner once more. After only half a minute, I'd pinpointed the fucker's location. Apartment 307. I took a deep breath, rummaged through my pockets, and pulled out the now crumpled up fake repair bill. For a moment, I stared at it and frowned. Yeah, good job, you freaking idiot. Then I rang the doorbell and prepared myself. No more fuck-ups. A moment later, a dizzy-looking brunette opened the door. Yes, hello? She greeted me with a half-questioning, half-confused look on her face. Good day, miss. I'm here to check out the heater in your apartment. Your renting company informed me that there's trouble with it, so I'd like to have a look at them and... But there's already someone checking the pipes in the bathroom. He told me there's a... Shit. I cut her off. The fucker was clever, all right. It must have taken on the guise of some handyman to stalk its prey and enter their places. Exactly what I'd have done. The woman's face changed to a scared expression when she heard my curse and saw the frown on my forehead. She tried to close the door, but I put my foot in. Uh, Hold on, miss, and listen. I started improvising in a low voice as I forced the door open again. Listen, I haven't heard of any other appointments regarding your apartment, so... The guy inside might be a scammer, okay? It's very common these days. There's there's some uh, people who pretend to work for a company to get entry into people's apartments. Uh, They do it to steal their valuables, hack into their Wi-Fi. I'm not sure how familiar you are with online banking or PayPal hacks, but... I assure you, it's no joke. You can, you can cross-check the form I brought. It should give you sufficient proof of my identity. Without warning, or waiting for an answer, I shoved the crumpled-up fake repair bill into her face and pushed myself past her. No, but... She protested, but I cut her right off. I'm going to give my supervisor a call to see if he can identify the man. Should there be any trouble, I'm going to inform security right away. God, I thought, what an absolute load of bullshit. <laughs> There's no way she'd believe me, but... Was there? To my surprise, she seemed to buy it. Okay, but what if he's dangerous? You don't have to worry about a thing. Like I said, security is just a call away. For now, please step outside, at least until I've confirmed what's going on. Finally, she gave me a weak nod and pointed towards the bathroom at the end of the hallway. While I was still staring at her, I took out my phone and pretended to call my supervisor. This seemed to convince her, and she stepped outside. Alright, fucker. Time to get to know my little friend here, I thought as I caressed my gun and inched toward the bathroom. The moment I stepped inside, I found an older man below the sink working on it. A toolbox was propped up next to him, and when he noticed me, he looked up in confusion. What the hell? He started. Don't tell me that idiot Christopherson messed up the assignments again. 
Then he squinted his eyes and heaved himself upward. Now, wait a minute, who the hell are you? I stared at the guy, ready to pull up my gun, but... Something didn't add up. This was too good. Too real. Was this guy really... From down the hallway, I heard the front door being thrown shut, followed by a succession of disgusting noises. Flesh rending, bones snapping, skin stretching, and then... Footsteps. Big, hard, fast footsteps. Someone, no, something was getting closer. And quickly. I threw myself aside, barely avoiding the swing of a clawed hand, and crashed right against the side of the bathtub. A second later, something huge and contorted ran past me, straight for the poor handyman. What the... was all he said before a blood-curdling scream cut through the air. Blood splattered and the wet sound of flesh tearing drowned the man's screams. Motherfucker, I screamed as I ripped out my gun. A contorted, blood-covered version of the woman's face jerked in my direction. You made a mistake, asshole. I brought out, grinning as I pointed the gun at it. You should have focused on me first. My finger was on the trigger, and I was about to press it. One of the creature's arms shot forward. Too slow, too far away, I told myself, but then my hand was batted aside. The shot trailed off, and the gun clattered away, vanishing somewhere in the depths of the bathroom. The creature's arm had become an elongated mass of flesh and bone, and it stretched further than should have been possible. Finally, I realized what I was up against. Worst case scenario. A frickin' shapeshifter. The creature's mouth opened to a wide grin, revealing rows upon rows of long, needle-like teeth. A thick, heavy tongue pushed outward and licked blood and gore from its lips. When the creature pushed itself upward, I realized how huge it was. Its legs had changed into a twisted mass of muscles. Its arms were long and dangling, and the claws at their ends scratched over the ceramic tiles of the floor. For an instant, the creature's hungry eyes met mine. Then it rushed at me. I tried to throw myself back into the hallway to get out of reach, but the thing was too fast and its arms were too long. The claws tore over my chest, ripping apart the boiler suit and leaving a deep gash in my protective armor. I didn't even have time to curse as a second attack followed. This one aimed right at my head. I jerked to my left, but I still felt claws scratching over the skin of my left cheek. Fuck! I screamed up in pain. I felt my blood running down the left side of my face. The creature giggled in anticipation, licked the blood off its claws before it attacked once more. This time I could avoid it, fled down the hallway, and threw myself into one of the other rooms, the bedroom. Shit, a freaking shapeshifter without a gun. This was going to get ugly. Really ugly. I didn't have time to think, though. The creature crashed into the room right behind me, and a moment later it was upon me once more. I ducked under a sideways sweep, but it left me wide open for a second attack. I felt hot, sharp pain on my right side as the claws cut through the protective armor. The fucker had only grazed me, but it hurt like hell. I screamed, almost toppled over, but forced myself to keep standing. Another attack followed, but this time I was ready. Combat knife in hand, I dodged and rammed the blade deep into the creature's arm. It screeched up, pulled free, and crashed its entire body into mine. The force of the attack almost threw me from my feet. I was dizzy, my head was spinning, but I watched as its giant mouth opened. Almost in slow motion, I saw its jaw and hinge and its neck push outward. When the head jerked into my direction, I threw myself to my knees. I pushed forward straight against the creature's body. The blade cut through the leathery skin and muscular flesh below with ease. I pushed myself upward and drove the knife deep into the creature's body with my entire weight. A loud, guttural scream told me the fucker was hurting, and hurting bad. A second later, I threw myself sideways and still holding onto the knife. The creature's chest tore open in a wide arc. Dark, bluish blood erupted from the wound in its chest, drenching me in the entire bedroom floor. Another ear-piercing scream cut through the air. The creature batted me aside, throwing me against the wardrobe in the back of the room. All the air was driven from my lungs, and I collapsed on the floor. Damn it, why won't you fucking die? The creature's eyes focused on me once more. It took a step forward, then another before it staggered and crashed down right on top of me. Then it lay still. Fucking hell. I brought out, panting, and pushed the disgusting body off of me. I was covered almost completely in disgusting blood. The smell made me gag for a moment. I fought myself back to my feet, checked the creature once more before I rubbed the blood off myself with a bedsheet. 
Only when I cleaned myself up did I contact headquarters. Yeah, I took care of the creature. But the noise uh, might have alerted some of the other residents. There's also a victim, a handyman. Nothing I could do, unfortunately. I think it's best. Mommy, what's going on? I heard a quiet voice from outside in the hallway. Moments later, knife still in hand, I found myself face to face with a small boy. About four years of age. He was standing in the bedroom doorway. His eyes grew wide and he started crying almost instantly before he rushed away. Shit. Exterminator 7D11087. What is the situation? Instead of answering, I stumbled after the little boy who'd retreated to the living room. Fucking shit, I should have checked if someone else was around. The thing must have kept the boy alive to blend in better. Shit, I fucked up. I fucked up big time. I stood there in the door to the living room and saw him cowering in a corner, half hidden behind the couch, sobbing hysterically. I took a step back and relayed the situation. Outside, I could hear the blaring of the fire alarm set off to get the rest of the residents out of the building. There's a problem. We've got a survivor. The creature was a shapeshifter, took the place of a young woman and kept her son around. He's currently in the living room, requesting permission to take the child to a hospital to... That won't be necessary, Exterminator 7D11087. The computerized voice cut me off. The building's being locked down as we speak, and our cleanup crew is already on the way. We assure you, we are prepared to handle this situation. There's no further need for your involvement. But what about the fucking kid? I yelled into the phone. Don't tell me. The situation's under control. Return to your base of operations immediately. Further dissonance will be deemed an offense and will be punished accordingly. As I stood there staring at the boy, I opened my mouth in protest, but I knew I could do nothing. I'd already gotten a warning. And as I told you, you don't mess with headquarters. I took one last look at the scared little boy, cursed myself, and picked up my gun and left the apartment. Shit like this happens. Shit like this happens all the time. It doesn't make it any easier. Evidence is a big no-no. But so are witnesses. With a sour taste in my mouth, I made my way down the stairs. Outside, people were driven back by the police. One officer noticed me in the state I was in and demanded who I was and what I was doing there. He was pushed aside by a man in a dark suit. After only a few words, the officer took one more glance in my direction before he nodded and went back to where he'd come from. I turned back toward the building once more before I went on my way. I told myself to head straight home, but before I knew it, I was on my way to the closest liquor store. As I said, in this line of work, you can use the occasional drink. Or a few, for that matter. Fuck monsters and fuck headquarters. Some of you might wonder how I ended up in this sort of occupation. It's not exactly the type of job you pick up on a whim or apply for. No, you could say I sort of fell into it. As I mentioned before, sometimes people are unlucky enough to encounter some of these creatures before they're taken care of. Sometimes those people are lucky enough to make it out alive. That's what happened to me. And that's why I was chosen to become the cheerful exterminator I am today. I wish none of this would have happened, and given the shit I've seen over the years, I often wish I hadn't made it out alive at all. Alright, you're not here for my pity party. You're here to find out how this entire fucking shit show started, right? It was back in the summer of 2016. Only six years ago, but it feels like an entire lifetime. Early summer was always a time I enjoyed. Those hot days and warm nights always felt special to me. They make you want to go out, spend the night gazing at the stars, and to forget about all your obligations. It was my best friend Thomas who invited me and my girlfriend Julie to hang out by the riverside. He wanted to have some barbecue, share a few cold drinks, and introduce us to Gabriella, a girl he'd been dating for a while now. It was supposed to be a fun day but it turned into my worst nightmare. Gabriella turned out to be a pretty interesting person, and after introductions were over, we just hung out and talked about all the mundane things in life that didn't matter. 
As the sun went down and our drinks became scarce, we decided on a little pub crawl in one of the more trendy areas in our city. It's a place overcrowded with cramped bars, shitty clubs, and late-night stores. It's your typical bustling party district. At least the bigger streets are like that. If you leave those behind, you find small, dark alleyways, deserted side streets, and old, rundown buildings. Back then, I didn't know it, but it's one of the places the creatures I hunt down like the most. Where better to hide and lay in wait for prey than society's underbelly? I later learned that headquarters had my city under surveillance, but regarded it as a low-priority area. Thus, no exterminator was present, and things occasionally got out of hand. The first bar we went to was a small, well-known hard rock joint. The music was great, the drinks were cheap, and we had a blast before we moved on. After two other bars, we decided we had enough of sitting in cramped spaces. The night was mild and the sky was clear. It was perfect to sit outside. We got ourselves a few more beers from a late night store and went on our way to find a place to enjoy the night. It was Thomas who told us he knew just the place. He mentioned a certain construction site nearby. It was supposed to become a high-rise building, but construction had been suspended months ago. If we'd made our way inside and got to the highest floor, we'd have a fantastic view over the entire area. I wasn't a fan of the idea. My city isn't dangerous, but if you strayed from the lively areas, you could still have run into a disgruntled homeless person, or a few drunks a little bit less stable than you. Or, well, something even worse. Thomas, of course, didn't have any of it. He promised it was nearby, safe, and we'd regret not checking the place out. So, being the idiot I am, I eventually agreed to come along. We went down a small side street, made our way through one dark alleyway, then another, before we arrived at a closed-off area. Thomas was quick to show us his secret entrance, and in we went. By that point, we were all pleasantly buzzed, and I'd long forgotten my original fears. It was only Gabriella who turned around at some point. She said she'd heard something, but Thomas was quick to put his arm around her and sway her. Maybe if we'd listened to her, things would have turned out differently. But somehow, I know it was already too late by then. We made our way through the empty building, past bleak walls and up half-finished staircases. When we reached the top, I had to admit that Thomas had been right. The view was stunning. We settled down with our remaining drinks and decided to spend the early morning hours right there. It wasn't long before we heard something. Footsteps. First, they were below us, and we listened as they shuffled through the deserted hallways of the building. Then whoever was responsible made their way upstairs. I gave Thomas an apprehensive look and was about to curse him when someone stepped into the barren room. Thought I saw somebody up here. What's up, guys? It was a scrawny teenager with unkempt hair and a beer in his hand. We were all quiet, but the kid seemed to be alone, smaller and younger than us, and pretty drunk himself. Hey there, Thomas greeted him before anyone else could so much as open their mouths. He was the friendliest person I knew and approached and befriended pretty much anyone, regardless of who they were. We're having a few drinks and enjoying the view, he continued. Mind if I join in? The kid asked. Well, sorry, but... I started, but was cut off by Thomas. We're all pretty drunk, so why the hell not? The more the merrier, he said with a grin and toasted the kid. Indeed, the newcomer said, smiling and joining us. Something about his voice was a bit strange, but I couldn't put it anywhere. Things had started off a bit awkwardly, but the kid didn't seem to be the dangerous type. He joined around with us, kept drinking his beer, and while he was odd, he made for some all right company. That was, until he made some offhand comments. You know, sometimes I wish I could just... He mumbled, giving Gabriella a little wink while he licked his lips. She shuffled around, not saying anything, but inched closer to Thomas. He was quick to diffuse the situation by changing the topic back to music and local clubs. I listened for a while before I cuddled up with Julie. Together we sat there, gazing at the stars and musing on about life. Only when things got heated again did I turn around. Thomas had gotten up and stood in front of the kid with an annoyed expression on his face. You know, 
It might be best for you to leave. He snapped. Damn it. I cursed to myself. He shouldn't have invited him after all. What's going on? I asked as I got up. This guy's creepy. He keeps staring at me and making these weird comments. Gabriella answered. Uh, all right. How about this? It's almost morning anyways. I started and tried to end things before they could escalate further. Oh, you want to leave so soon? The kid asked in a sing-song voice that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Yeah, we are. So how about... Thomas' sentence was cut off right in the middle. The sound of shattering glass reached my ears as the bottle he'd been holding hit the floor. Then he started screaming. I took a step forward, but suddenly there was blood. So much goddamn blood. I saw it hadn't just been Thomas's bottle that had fallen. Right there in front of him lay both of his severed hands. He fell to his knees, tears streaming from his eyes, and he stared at his bloody stumps in utter confusion. Everyone froze. No one knew what the hell was happening. I remember staring at the situation in a mixture of disbelief and shock, not able to grasp the situation in front of me. At this moment, the kid began laughing. First in his normal, somewhat grating voice, but soon it changed and became guttural and distorted. His body trembled and shifted below his clothes. Dylan? What's going on? Julie asked in a shaken voice as she clung to my arm. I wanted to say something, but my brain wasn't able to form words. I wasn't able to do anything. The kid's clothes started bulging and tore apart as his body twisted around itself. He was shaking, convulsing, but that guttural laughter continued and grew in intensity. His body began warping itself. Muscles grew, skin stretched and tore apart, bones pushed outward, puncturing skin and flesh before they grew into additional appendages. I couldn't move and could only stare at the horrific, surreal transformation happening right in front of my eyes. What had been the body of a scrawny teenager was now a twisted mess of flesh and appendages that towered high above each one of us. Suddenly, the creature's head jerked forward on an elongated neck. The thing put its mouth close to Thomas's ear and whispered something I couldn't understand. Then its mouth opened wider and wider. Skin and flesh tore apart as its jaw unhinged. For a second, I saw brick-like teeth and a bloated black tongue. Then it bit right into Thomas's neck. Blood gushed outward. His arms rose and waved through the air frantically before they flopped down again. After that, the thing's monstrous face changed to a wide grin as it turned to Gabriella. Uh, there's nothing better than a hunt, it said in its distorted, inhuman voice. It was then that the reality finally sunk in and panic descended. Gabriella was crying and inched away from the creature, but within seconds it was upon her and tore her to pieces. She didn't even have time to scream. Julie was the first to move again. She rushed for the stairs before she turned back, got a hold of my arm and pulled me after her. Dylan, come on! She screamed at me in sheer hysterics. When I could finally move, I stumbled after her. Down, get away, run away. Those were the only things that were on my mind. In front of me, Julie already hurried through the hallway. We stumbled on and finally made it to the stairs. We threw ourselves forward down to the floor below while the abomination's deep, throaty laugh followed us from above. Run, little mice, run, it called after us. The entire building shook. Julie screamed, tripped, and fell to the floor. As I pulled her up, I turned around, expecting to find the creature right behind us. Hell, I'd expected it to come for me and could already feel the pain. The stairs, however, were empty. Julie had gotten back to her feet, but we'd barely taken a handful of steps when the ceiling in front of us burst apart. Plaster and stone rained down before an avalanche of limbs and muscle descended. The thing giggled as its eyes focused on us. Its wide mouth was twisted into the same gigantic grin I'd seen before. Oh, I am going to enjoy this. I thought it would rush us then and there, but it didn't have to. It knew as well as we did there was no way out. How could you hope to run from something like this? We wouldn't be able to get away. We were trapped. In front of me, the entire hallway was filled with a sprawling amalgamation of limbs and flesh. 
For a moment, the creature's eyes met mine, and I couldn't help but give a short, insane laugh. Then it moved, pushing itself forward, relishing my terror. Its limbs were holding onto the surrounding walls as it dragged itself forward like a spider. Why don't you run? It asked in a giggling voice. Right at that moment, Julie pulled me away from the thing, down the hallway and into a room to our right. Bellowing laughter erupted from outside. What was she doing? It didn't matter what we did. It didn't matter a damn bit. For a moment, another bout of mad laughter escaped my mouth. Behind us, the first of the creature's many limbs were getting a hold of the doorway and dug into the brickwork. Right at that moment, I saw it. The sun was dawning. A window. A window was right in front of us. We stumbled forward, reached it, but Julie's face turned to despair. No. She started and fell to her knees. She kept repeating it over and over again. We were up way too high. We're on the third floor. There's... Wait, Julie. I cut her off. Over there, that ledge. If we can get there, we'll make it to the scaffold and kick it down. At first she didn't understand what I was saying. When the creature pushed itself into the room, though, its mouth hanging open, jaw unhinged and tongue dangling from it, she got going and pushed herself onto the ledge. I was about to follow her and to swing myself out, but I suddenly felt a piercing pain in my leg. As the creature dragged me backward, I beat against its head, screamed, but I could do nothing. The creature's face, however, wasn't focused on me. No. It was staring at the window. For the first time, something in its face changed. For the first time, it looked elated. Julie, run! I screamed at the top of my lungs. The creature threw me aside, pushed past me, and burst through the window. Outside, I heard Julie's steps on the scaffold and her desperate cries for help. I prayed. I hoped she'd make it and she'd be able to alert someone. Yet only seconds later, her cries were cut off and I heard the sickening sounds of tearing flesh. With it, my last sliver of hope was crushed. I was on the floor and watched in a trance while the blood slowly streamed from the wound in my leg. I barely looked up when the creature returned. It stared right at me from the hole that had been a window not long ago. Then I saw Julie's remains in one of its many bony hands. So weak. So fragile. It mused on. The hand around Julie's lifeless, bleeding frame pressed down. I heard bones breaking, flesh tearing, and saw her body bursting into pieces. At that moment, I saw red. I don't know what happened exactly, but I remember throwing myself against the creature and colliding hard with it. I felt something puncture my abdomen and then felt something hot, warm, and wet run down my leg. The thing held onto the wall for a bit longer, but then the bricks gave way. For a second, I was weightless before I crashed down right on top of the thing. This time, however, it was the creature that was screaming and hurting. As I rolled off its body, I saw what had happened. We crashed down on an enormous stack of building materials, and the creature had been impaled by at least a dozen metal rods. It was twisting itself, screeching, and desperately trying to push itself upward, but it seemed trapped. I tried to get up, to get away, but once more it got hold of me. I felt its powerful grip on my leg again and felt its fingers dig into skin and flesh. Then it twisted my leg and yanked me backwards. I screamed as tendons ripped and bones broke. In my desperation to get away, I scrambled around before my hand finally closed around something. It was a power tool left behind when construction was abandoned. As I was pulled back, I used all the force I could still muster and brought it down on the creature's head. I felt it twisting my leg, felt another of its hands tear through my body, but I didn't feel pain anymore. All I felt was rage, blazing, burning rage. And with it, I brought the power tool down again and again and again. I don't know when it stopped moving. I don't know when I passed out. All I knew was that I should have been dead. No one should be able to survive the wounds I had suffered. Yet, headquarters had proven more than once that they could accomplish the impossible. When I woke up, I found myself in a small hospital room. Several strange machines surrounded me, and a plethora of tubes and cables were connected to my body. Good morning, Mr. Jackson. It's a miracle you're still alive. A miracle? 
only possible because of us. The one who was speaking was a woman. She stood over me. Her face was emotionless. Her eyes were cold. What? What's going on? Where am I? I blurted out before the memory of what had happened returned to me. In shock and disbelief, I tried to push myself up, but a sharp, hot pain shot through my entire body. Even worse, I was constrained to the bed. Where's everyone? Where are Thomas and Gabriella? Then, after a few seconds, I asked the one question that truly mattered. Where's Julie? They are dead, Mr. Jackson, the woman said without the slightest change to her voice. All of them. All the energy left me as the soul-crushing reality hit me. I slumped back down and began crying again. What the fuck happened? What? What was that? I finally stammered. The creature you had contact with was evaluated as a lower C-class organism. The fuck are you even talking about? What the... I broke up. I didn't have the energy to continue. As I said, what you encountered was a lower C-class organism. Or... In layman's terms, a monster. It's regrettable what happened last night, and we would like to give you our condolences. The existence of these organisms, however, has to remain secret. We can't have the knowledge of their existence becoming public. Like I give a shit about any of that. Mr. Jackson, there are only two options. One, you vanish. Right here and now. Two, you become part of our organization. Vanish? What the hell are you... She didn't need to answer. Her cold, hard, emotionless expression told me everything. Do you want revenge, Mr. Jackson? These things are out there. And what happened last night is not an exception. People are being killed and torn apart just like your friends. I didn't say a damn thing. Hell, what do you say to something like that? You were not only able to survive an encounter with a C-class organism. You took it down, with no specialized equipment. It might have been luck, but impressive nonetheless. We also confirmed that your resilience and potential are above average compared to What you're trying to say is you want me to take down those things, isn't it? Which do you choose, Mr. Jackson? As I lay there, the events of last night played out in my head again. Thomas' screams. Gabriella being torn apart. And finally, Julie's lifeless body bursting apart. Worst of all, was the thing's grin. It had acted as if we'd been nothing but prey. If I do, I get to kill those things, right? For the first time, a hint of a smile showed on her face and she nodded. She knew what I'd pick, and with nothing but a single sentence, I was in. You know what? Fuck monsters. Today's job was simple, at least on paper. It was another D-class signature, a swarm type, which meant a lot of fucking bugs. They are usually not a danger if handled quickly and efficiently. That's the major difference between them and other signatures. Those fuckers breed fast, really fast. Left alone for a few weeks or hell, even just a few days, they multiply by the thousands. There have been cases when unsuspecting homes and even entire settlements have been swallowed up by swarm types. Today, I didn't bring my trusty gun. As much as it pained me to admit it, it would be useless. Instead, I scurried through the storage room until I found one of headquarters certified flamethrowers. The thing was small, barely larger than a handgun, but could shoot at balls of concentrated fire that would evaporate almost anything. Other than that, I went with my usual outfit of protective armor and a bottle of anti-flame contraption, in case things got a little too heated. 
Then, in a temporary bout of insanity, I got a hold of two flame grenades. Flamers, for short. The signature was relatively new, so I didn't expect too much trouble. Of course, I was only half right, but more about that later. Before that, let me share a few intricacies of my work with you. First, I can't tell you much about headquarters. They are some big, powerful organization, but their real name alone seems to be one of the most well-kept secrets in the world. What I do know is that they operate on a global scale, and keep a tight net on surveillance. Some areas are less surveyed, others completely ignored, while some mostly urban areas are tightly surveyed. The reason is simple. More people mean more danger of things getting out of hand. You can hide the fact that shit hit the fan in some remote village. Should things go wrong in a city, the entire world would be watching. When I started my work as an exterminator, my city was low on headquarters priority list. While it's fairly big, its population density is low. Recently, though, surveillance has been tightened since the number of incidents has been on the rise. I've wondered before how they keep this level of surveillance going. But of course, no one would share such information with someone like me. It might be a satellite-based system, swarms of survey drones, or hell, more of their magical mumbo-jumbo. Once they find hints of strange activity, the signature is analyzed. Should there be a hit, an exterminator is sent out to handle things. While I work alone, I know entire groups of exterminators are active in other areas. As for signatures, those are organized by class and type. The division by class refers to the level of danger. D-class is regarded as low danger, while A-class is reserved for incidents of the highest level. D-class and C-class can be handled by a single exterminator. B-class organisms are a lot tougher, and require multiple exterminators. I only ever was involved in a handful of them, but let me tell you, it was nasty. The real fun, however, starts with A-class. Those are the biggest, nastiest fuckers. Records show them leveling entire towns and causing massive destruction in cities. The procedures here are completely different. If you're on your own, you're forbidden from engaging. Instead, you're tasked with getting intel while the area is being evacuated and put under lockdown, until enough exterminators are present. Thankfully, A-class organisms are rare, and I never had the bad luck of encountering any of them. The type should be pretty much self-explanatory. A lot of different creatures are out there. Headquarters has put together an entire freaking database, a compendium they call it, showing you every nasty fucker that crawls around out there. Where do those things come from, you might ask? Some of you might be familiar with the multiverse theory. It states, for simplicity's sake, that there's an infinite number of parallel universes. I've got no clue if that's what's going on, but it comes close enough. Most of the creatures I take care of aren't part of our world. Instead, they come here from different planes of reality. I read reports about portals creating overlaps between different realities, but I've seen nothing like it. These reports state that if such a portal should appear, things can slip through and make their way into a different reality. Most creatures come here by accident. They are stranded in an alien world and try their best to survive, which means preying on its inhabitants. Those are not the only ones, though. There are beings who are smarter, who seek portals out, and who slip through by their own volition. Those are the nasty ones, the ones that mean trouble. However, there are other cases. Sometimes the external influences from a different plane of reality are enough to taint animals or people native to our world. You can think of it as interdimensional radioactivity. The results are as nasty as they sound. Well, that's enough for now. Class is over. The problem with swarm types is that those fuckers don't just crawl into a house and start eating people. No, they find themselves a suitable hiding place and begin multiplying. Today's signature told me the buggers had opted for a park in the center of the city. While the place isn't Central Park, it's still enormous and has its share of wide meadows and large forested areas. To tell you the truth, I hate swarm types. You never know how long those fuckers have been breeding. While most signatures are quickly discovered, those fuckers can sometimes hide well enough to avoid detection for a few days. And that's when the real fun starts. What makes this entire thing worse is I hate bugs. Always have. Always will. When I made it to the park, the sun had long set. Great, I thought, as I got out my close-range scanner. I should have brought the night vision goggles. 
so much for being prepared. I didn't like this. Not one bit. As I continued on my way through the park, I couldn't help but watch my step. If you were careless, you could step right into their nest. Even now, I still have scars from the very first time I encountered a swarm type. Never again, I told myself. Step by step, I continued on, scanning the area with a close-range scanner. But so far, I didn't see a damn thing. For a while, I followed one of the many hiking trails through the park, but I knew it wouldn't get me anywhere. Before long, I pushed myself past trees and right into the underbrush. You wouldn't expect someone like me to fear the dark, but... To tell you the truth, I was anxious as fuck. Knowing that you can be swarmed by hundreds of multi-legged horrors at any moment would freak anyone out. Finally, the close-range scanner got a hit, and after a few more meters, I could make out the first of the buggers. They were a nasty bunch, all right. They looked similar to ants, but I could tell they were much, much bigger. For a moment, I stopped, told myself to calm down, and took a deep breath and hit the close-range scanner once more. Wouldn't you know it, today was my lucky day. The entire area ahead of me was teeming with them. Fucking shit, I cursed myself as I stared at the dark forest ahead of me. Why did it have to be in the middle of the goddamn night? Flamethrower at the ready, I inched forward. The moment I got close enough, the first of the ants came for me. Light him up, I joked as I hit the flamethrower. A concentrated ball of fire engulfed the entire wave of ants. Their screeching and the sound of their carcasses popping was music to my ears. Fuck you, you goddamn bugs. I mumbled with a grin on my face. The rest of the swarm remained weary, and I retreated to a small hill. It had to be the nest. Step by step, I inched closer, my hand closed tightly around the flamethrower's trigger. For a moment, my eyes scanned the trees next to me and the branches above me. Nothing. Right at that moment, another wave came for me and another ball of fire took care of them. The few that remained gathered around the nest ahead of me. Well, checkmate, I thought as I took another step forward. Only for my foot to sink into the floor. I felt no resistance. My leg vanished between a teeming mass of ants. I'd been careful, and I'd been prepared, but I still lost my balance. I stumbled forward and plunged face first into the hole. Not only a hole, I realized. Their real nest. What they'd created ahead of me had been a fake. A trap to lure me in. And once more, I'd been dumb enough to fall for it. I didn't have time to think about that, however. Within seconds, the thing swarmed me. Hundreds, if not thousands of them, descended upon me from a multitude of tunnels. I could feel them all over my body, tearing at the fabric of my clothing and the protective armor below. I swayed, flailed around, and tried to get them off me, but more and more were joining the fray. In desperation, I tried to push myself up, but it felt like the entire swarm was on top of me. Fucking hell, you won't get me that easily! I screamed as I punched the flamethrower's trigger. I felt the heat of a fireball, heard the sizzling burning carcasses. Moments later, however, the flames were doused and blocked off, as part of the swarm sacrificed itself to save the rest. A rest that were now getting even angrier. Shit. God damn shit. Why do things never go my fucking way? I fired again, tried to do it a third time, but by now it did nothing. The flamethrower was blocked off. Even worse, I could feel them getting past the protective armor. I could feel them on my body, digging into my skin and the flesh below. This wouldn't end well. I tried once more to get free, but it was futile. All I could do was to move my right arm. No other way, I decided as I ripped out a flamer. I tore my arm free, pushed it through the seething, teeming mass, activated it, and threw it as high into the air as possible. Moments later, an explosion tore through the air above me. Even below the mass of the entire swarm, I could feel the blast wave before liquid fire descended. It ate through the nest and the damned ants like nothing before it reached me as well. Once more, I flailed around, jumped up, tried to drench the flames but eventually I had to spray myself with the anti-flame contraption. My entire body was in pain. I felt it in sharp, fiery bursts, and I knew I'd gotten some serious burns. As I pushed myself from the remains of the burning nest, the flamethrower was in my hand again. I clenched my teeth and fired it at anything that was moving in a blind rage. 
A cacophony of screeches and clicking noises filled the night. I saw that some of the fuckers were trying to flee, but I was relentless. Before long, the entire area around the nest was covered in flames, and all insects had been burned to a crisp. I finally took out the second flamer and threw it into the center of the nest for good measure. Bits and pieces of the burning nest and ants were thrown into the night sky, blanketing the forest all around me. That's what you get. That's what you fucking get. I screamed at the burning pit in front of me. I hit up the close-range scanner again and was glad to see that all the signals were gone. For all I knew, I'd eradicated any last hint of the things. This time, no nest was left. For once, I'd been thorough. Truly thorough. As I watched the burning forest floor and the first of the burning trees in front of me, I realized I might have been a bit too thorough. Oh, you gotta be... I cursed. I reached for the bottle of the anti-flame contraption, but in my panic I'd used up most of it inside the nest. What remained wasn't enough to douse all the flames around me. With a few clicks, I notified headquarters I'd taken care of the signature, and that the night was over. As I stared at the burning trees all around me, and listened to the distant sirens of fire trucks, I knew I'd fucked up once more. For the first time in a long while... I considered just smashing my phone, but I knew it wouldn't do me any good. Headquarters would get into contact with me one way or another, and they'd tear me a new one for this. As I retreated from the area and the now burning park, I cursed myself again and again. Fuck monsters and fuck my own goddamn stupidity. Most of you have heard the term Sunday fun day, right? It means getting drunk on Sunday as early as possible, so you pass out in the afternoon or early evening and are fit again come Monday morning. Now, I don't have a regular schedule, of course. Shit can hit the fan on a Sunday as well. This week, however, there had been three signatures. Normally there's only one. Two's the exception. I felt pretty damn safe to start on one of my favorite meals right around noon. Bourbon with a side dish of more bourbon. As you already know, I'm not the smartest guy around. And definitely not the luckiest. No, I'd say I'm a rather dumb, unlucky son of a bitch. It was about five in the afternoon when the ringing of my phone woke me. At first I had no clue what was going on and realized I must have passed out sometime earlier. For a while I just stared at the phone in frustration, then confusion, and finally utter disbelief. No freaking way. The park, I told myself. They were calling me about the damn park I torched. With sweaty, shaking hands, I reached out for the phone. If it's about the park the other day, I started, but the computerized voice cut me off right away. Exterminator 7D11087. We assure you there will be repercussions for your improper actions during incident to a T1... U8D. However, this matter is of no importance right now. We have discovered a new signature in your vicinity. The analysis of the signature gives us indication that the organism is a C-class humanoid type. I listened, but my alcohol-fueled brain didn't comprehend what they were saying. Once I'd finally understood, I couldn't keep quiet. Well... You're, you're fucking kidding me, right? That's the fourth incident in a single week. Well, you are aware of the rise of activity in your area. However, given the danger of the current signature, we insist you take care of it immediately. No excuses, Exterminator 7D11087. With that, the line was cut, and I was left alone on my couch. My head was spinning, and I was cursing myself like a madman. Shit. There's nothing I can do, is there? Not like I can ignore a direct order from headquarters. I picked up the phone and opened the signature data. Yeah, it was C-Class, all right. When it rains, it pours. Woo fucking who? All right, I told myself, no fucking around. Time for the big guns. Get this shit over with as soon as possible. With my head still spinning, I stumbled towards the storage room and almost crashed against the doorframe. Even putting on the protective armor proved a challenge. 
Once that was done, I stocked up on firepower. Two guns, a shotgun, and as many grenades as I could carry. I didn't give a single shit today. Humanoid again. Isn't that fucking great? Finally, I got my hands on a few of headquarters stimulants and the special type. Didn't get enough sleep? Feeling a little sick? No problem. Those little wonder drugs would take care of all your problems. Hell, they provide you with enough energy to feel like frickin' Superman, at least for a while. I was about to storm out of the door, ready to light up any and all fuckers, but then I turned around and got a hold of the almost empty bottle of bourbon. I downed the rest in a single gulp. It didn't matter. I was wasted anyway. As I was on my way, I told myself once more that I wouldn't fuck up again. Today would be no walk in the park. It was freaking C-class. The signature originated from an urban development area in my city. It comprised lots of half-finished buildings. Could mean I was in for a bit of a chase, but with no people around, I could go all out. I thought with a grin. The moment I arrived, I popped two of headquarters' wonder drugs. The spinning in my head stopped. My body felt hot, my muscles tensed up, and I was flooded with energy. Man, this stuff was the shit. I pulled out the shotgun, hit the close-range scanner, and got a hit almost immediately. The fucker was nearby, in a half-finished apartment complex to my right. I was about to hit the scanner again to pinpoint the creature's exact location, but there was no need. The fucker had gone wild. I had barely set foot in the building when I saw a trail of blood. It led down the long, central hallway before it led to an empty, half-finished apartment at the end of the building. The closer I got, the sicker the smell of blood and body fluids got. For a moment, I had to cover my mouth as the smell of rotten meat and dried blood reached my nose. Jesus Christ, what had the thing done here? Alright, calm down. Act like a goddamn professional. I inched closer to the doorway, hiding myself from the inside. A quick check of the close-range scanner told me the fucker was right ahead. No time to fuck around, I told myself as I threw a flash grenade inside. Blazing light exploded from the doorway, and a second later I burst inside, ready to pump the fucker full of holes. Yet, all I found inside were the remains of people. One body was slumped against the wall next to the entrance. All others had been torn to pieces. Their flesh was shredded, and nothing but bones were left. It was impossible to say how many of the thing had killed here. As I stared at the massacre, I felt sick to my stomach. There was more to this room, however. The walls were covered in obscure symbols and alien scriptures so strange they made my head hurt. For a moment, I closed my eyes and told myself to focus. I had to find this fucker, and I had to do it quickly. As my eyes wandered over the room, something didn't add up. If this thing had been feeding on all those bodies, then why was the one by the entrance... Shit. I turned around just in time to see the body move. A fucking trap, but this time I'd seen through it. I shot once, then again, and then once more. I pumped the thing full of lead and holes, but there was no reaction. The flesh of the body tore apart, but didn't stop moving. Finally, I saw what I was really up against. Something bubbled outward from the holes of the body. I heard the disgusting sound of skin tearing as a mass of liquefied flesh broke from the body. When I saw it, I almost cringed back. Shit. This was no humanoid type. This was an entirely different organism. One that was much, much worse. I don't know if those fuckers even have a name. That's how rare they are. What I was up against was nothing but a shapeless mass of flesh. Alcohol and headquarters wonder drugs pumped heavy through my body, and I watched in horror as first a mouth and then a face formed on the mass. A terrifying, wet giggle came from the new-formed mouth of the creature. (laughs) Are you here to hunt me? The thing asked in a distorted, high-pitched voice. That's right, fucker. I spat at it. I took another shot at the thing and blasted apart the face and mouth that had formed, but... It did nothing. Within moments, the wound closed up and the thing reformed itself. No, it was transforming. Transfixed, I watched how liquefied flesh became solid and muscles and tendons formed. Then, before I could even react, an elongated appendage shot forward and grabbed a hold of me. I screamed in pain as it twisted my arm, causing me to drop the shotgun. At the same time, more appendages were forming. A twisted mess of hands came for me 
and in an instant my legs were restrained and I felt clawed fingers scratching over them. How are you going to hunt me now? A voice said from deep inside the flesh puddle. I could see mouths forming on its body as it slithered towards me. Teeth were already gnashing in anticipation of its next meal. Well, how about that? The flamer crashed against it and covered the creature in a blanket of liquid fire. This time it worked. The creature screeched, recoiled, and twisted its body around to drench the flames. Guess there was only one way to get rid of this fucker. I had to burn it to the last bit, and I was in the mood to do exactly that. In front of me, the thing shed part of its body and sacrificed it to the flames, while the rest slithered towards the exit. I was about to hurl another flamer when the withdrawals of headquarters wonder drug kicked in. Fuck, why now? My body began shaking and trembling uncontrollably. The flamer dropped from my hand and a moment later I crashed to the floor. Oh shit, you stupid idiot. My vision grew blurry. My head spun. And a moment later I threw up. Once I'd pushed myself back to my feet and had steadied myself again, the thing was long gone. I stumbled after it, but I was a shivering, shaking mess. For a moment, I had to push myself against the wall in front of me, barely able to catch my breath, and had to wait for my heartbeat to calm down. As I stormed from the room to follow the creature, I remembered the symbols on the walls. I took up my phone and hit up headquarters. Headquarters, I started, trying to keep my voice as steady as possible. I'm in pursuit of the creature, however, its hiding place was covered in various strange symbols. Might be nothing, but I got a bad feeling about it. With that, I hurried on. I still felt like shit, and for a moment I considered dumping another pill. But the withdrawals could be even worse. No, I had to finish this in the state I was in. If I even could. I hit the close-range scanner again and saw that the creature was on the move. At this moment, I remembered why those fuckers were so dangerous. It was the reason almost nothing had been left of the corpses in the room. They grew by absorbing organic matter. I, I knew what this thing was planning to do. Find a place with people, slaughter them all, and absorb them to regenerate. Grow and increase in size and power. Fucking hell. I told myself not to fuck up now and... Shit. Another look at the close-range scanner told me the thing had already left the urban development area. It was already searching. No. It was hunting. Half a minute later, I'd made it to the edge as well, and in front of me, on the other side of the street, I saw a recipe for trouble. It was a small, sleazy-looking corner bar, just the kind of place where you'd find people drinking on a Sunday afternoon and early evening. I rushed forward. I prayed I was wrong, but I could already hear the screams. You idiot, why'd you have to take those damn pills? No, why'd you have to go and get freaking wasted? All right, shut the hell up and take care of it. The moment I stormed inside, the place was already a bloodbath. People had been torn apart and blood was everywhere. Right in the center was a heap of liquefied flesh, gnawing at and consuming its newest victim. The entire bar was filled with the disgusting, sizzling sound of flesh melting as it became part of the creature's body. I tore out a flamer, but right at that moment, the thing got a hold of a person. One that was still alive. What are you going to do now, Hunter? Are you going to kill this one as well? The woman it had entangled was in utter hysterics. She was screaming and crying, trying desperately to get free. When her eyes met mine, I was reminded of Julie's. Without consciously knowing what I was doing, I lowered the hand holding the flamer. High-pitched laughter broke from the creature's body and a plethora of clawed appendages shot forward. I ducked aside and threw myself into a corner booth, but the attack still grazed the side of my body. I screamed up in pain and knew it had torn right through the protective armor. You fucking... I brought out as I lay there, pressing my hand against the wet wound on my side. When I looked at it, I saw blood. A lot of fucking blood. Shit, this was getting ugly. I could already hear the damn thing slithering around, getting closer. I inched to the edge of the booth, and what I saw made me freeze. The neck of the woman it was holding had been twisted, and I saw the bubbly flesh of the creature pushing into her body. She'd become just another meal. At that moment, I didn't care anymore. I threw the flamer, but this time not at the thing, but the area behind it. 
The flame spread within moments and turned the back of the bar into an inferno. It giggled, pulled in its boy, and prepared for another attack. You missed Hunter. It giggled in anticipation. Think again, you piece of shit. I threw two more flamers, again not at the creature, but at the walls to the left and right. I saw its attack coming, but this time I was faster and threw myself outside. By now, the creature seemed to have realized what I was doing. Its giggles had stopped and turned into an angry, deep grumbling. I heard it behind me, heard a wave of liquefied flesh pushing toward the front of the bar. But before it could do anything, I hit it with another flamer. A grin distorted my face, and I laughed as I heard the thing screeching. I stumbled back further, and then I threw the last of my flamers against the front of the building. By now, the bar had become a bona fide furnace. This time, the thing wouldn't get away. From inside, I heard it screech, scream, and thrash around before nothing but the sounds of sizzling flames remained. I stood there and watched the inferno in satisfaction before I remembered where I was. Within moments, I retreated to the urban development area and hid myself between the half-finished buildings. I was sure, however, that people must have noticed me. This time, I had fucked up gloriously. Sure, I was in trouble with headquarters, but that didn't matter. It didn't matter one bit. What mattered was that my fuck-up had cost people's life. For a while, I just sat there and listened to the police sirens while I cauterized my wounds. Then, after I'd calmed down and had taken care of the worst damage, I hit up headquarters and told them how badly I'd fucked up. As expected, they already knew. This C-Class had killed seven people, not including its original victims. Seven people. Seven fucking people were dead because of me. Return to your base of operations, Exterminator 7D11087. No one will stop you. The authorities have been informed about the incident, and witnesses have been put into custody. We assure you there will be repercussions for today's actions, but we're also aware of the heightened activity in your area. We acknowledge we may have miscalculated your abilities. Today's incident has proven that you're in need of assistance. We are going to send someone who will analyze the situation at hand and assist you. As I went on my way home, I was still shell-shocked about today's incident. Even worse, however, was the idea of headquarters sending another exterminator here. I fucking hate people. I hate working with others. Always had, and now... Damn it! Ugh, fuck monsters and fuck working with others. After yesterday's shit show, I was depressed, restless, and uneasy. It wasn't just the withdrawals from the alcohol and the damn pills. Neither was it, I had to admit, the knowledge that I'd gotten all those people killed. No, what really fucked me over big time was the knowledge that headquarters was sending someone to assist me. Well, strike that. They were sending me a damn watchdog. I knew what they'd said, and I knew how they worded it, but I damn well knew how they'd meant it. I couldn't sit still all morning. As much as I tried to calm down, I paced my shithole of an apartment. God, I hated the entire thing already. Minutes turned to hours. When my phone rang, I hoped it was another signature for the first time in, well, forever. Of course it wasn't. The monotone, computerized voice informed me that my new friend had just landed and was on the way to my humble base of operations. For a moment, I considered downing another bottle of booze and getting wasted before whatever asshole they'd sent would get there. Then I grew nervous, itchy even, and put the bottle back. If I did that, my new partner would most likely inform headquarters about it, and it would be added to my ever-growing list of transgressions. Instead, I forced myself to wait patiently. It wasn't long before I cleaned up the trash around me, but I gave up as quickly as I'd started. Not like it was any use, I thought, sighing. When the doorbell rang, I cringed at the sound. My head was still throbbing, and I wasn't in the mood to be goody two-shoes with anyone. As quietly as I could, I inched toward the front door and took a glance through the spyglass. When I noticed a woman with long black hair standing outside, I felt myself relaxing. 
All right, calm down and be friendly. She's probably a new neighbor who wants to introduce herself. I had to admit, she wasn't bad looking at all. I took a deep breath, combed through my hair, and straightened my shirt before I opened the door. Hey there, I said in my smoothest voice and gave her a little wink. Can I help you with something? She stared at me and squinted her eyes. A frown showed on her face before she took out her phone to check something. All the while, I stood there, leaning slightly against the door frame. The smile on my face didn't waver. When she spoke up, however, it vanished instantly. Exterminator 7D11087, I presume? I heard the words, but failed to understand them. No freaking way. My eyes wandered from her face down to her feet and up again. By now, her face had changed to a mixture of annoyance and disappointment. Uh, <clears throat> are you... I started, but then took a step aside to let her pass. Shit, so much for first impressions. How the hell was I able to fuck up every single thing these days? I'm Exterminator 4B98344, Sandra Petrova. As you're aware, headquarters sent me here to assist you in your exterminations and to uh, observe your general attitude and diligence on the job. I listened, but I could only focus on her number. 4B98344. Here's the thing. Those numbers aren't given randomly, no. They're given by rank. The lower the number, the higher the rank. This chick here was way above me in rank. Uh, n nice to meet you. I pressed out and extended a hand to greet her. Her eyes wandered from my face to my outstretched hand before they returned to my face. No other part of her moved. My hand dangled in the air for a while longer before I let it drop. I assume this is your... base of operations? She continued, and I saw her scanning the room. Once more, her disappointment was visible as she took in the general chaos that was my apartment. Her eyes came to rest on the empty bottles of booze, and she sighed. We'll need to make a few arrangements. For now, though, I'd like to have a look at the status of your equipment. Sure thing, it's right over here. With that, I led her to my small storage room. Open sesame, I joked as I pushed the door open for her. As she took in the chaotic state of the room, an exasperated look appeared on her face and I heard her mumble an unintelligible curse. Well, you know what Einstein said, I began. Orders for idiots, but only a genius. I'm well aware of the quote, Exterminator 7D11087. However, she continued, eyeing me once more. Someone like you definitely needs order. All right, this chick was a frickin' bitch. You know, maybe I like it this way. Maybe that's why I run shit around here. She grinned. Well, that's unfortunate, Exterminator 7D11087. But headquarters has put me in charge of this entire operation. From now on, we're running shit my way. With that, she pushed an official document in my face, which stated exactly what she just said, only in more professional words. Before I could so much as retort anything, she continued talking. In my briefing, headquarters informed me about the cryptic writings and symbols you discovered during your last extermination. To analyze the general situation, I'd like to assess all of the data for your recent activities. For that, I'd like to have a detailed look at all the areas in which signatures occurred. She took out her phone, pressed a few buttons, and went through a list of my latest misadventures. I think it's best if we visit all those places in order, to see if there's any hint of other symbols or writings. We'd best start with the sewer tunnel at... Yeah, that's all nice and fine. I cut her off. But there's no way we'll find anything in those places. Or even the sewers. She gave me an inquiring look. I answered with a shrug. Look, the sewers are pretty much gone. Took care of the whole damn infestation with a few of those beauties over there. With that, I pointed at the stack of standard issue grenades. I'd blown the whole fucking place up after I was forced to go back there. Sandra just stared at me. Disbelief distorted her face before she opened her mouth again. You... blew it up? Believe me, sweetheart, the fuckers had it coming. At the word sweetheart, her face grew visibly angry. 
I couldn't help but smile a little when I saw it. Oh, I could tell this was going to be a fantastic partnership. In the end, there wasn't much we could do. The apartment complex where I'd encountered the humanoid type was still closed off because of an ongoing police investigation. The park in which I'd taken care of the swarm had been torched. As for the development area, she'd already been provided with a visual analysis of the cryptic warnings and symbols. While Sandra was busy arranging a few things with headquarters, I went back to the couch to waste away. As I sat there, I could hear her stern, anger-filled voice as she cursed at headquarters for sending her here. The entire call lasted almost half an hour. We're going to relocate to a new location within the next days. She spat at me when she returned. This place here is too cramped and too much in a state of disarray for anyone to work at any level of efficiency. All right, lady. How about you talk like a normal fucking person for once? What is he trying to say? We're going to move to a different apartment. This one's too small and it's a dump. I took one look around my apartment. I stared at the dirty dishes and empty bottles of booze. To be honest, she had a point. The place really was a dump. But it was my dump. I liked it. Where's the new place even gonna... I started, but was cut off by Sandra's phone. Shit, what now? She gave me another angry stare before she picked up the phone and listened. After not even half a minute, the call ended and I knew what was going on. Let me guess, we got work to do, right? This time, she only nodded. Get your equipment ready. We're heading out ASAP. It's only a D-class signature, so we should be able to finish things up quickly and efficiently. Sure thing, boss, I said as I suited up. I put on my protective armor, got hold of my trusty gun, the combat knife, and a handful of grenades. As I filled my pockets, Sandra couldn't help but stare at me. Exterminator 7D11087. As I mentioned, it's only a D-class signature. I believe there's no need... You know what? You may be in command, lady, so I'm doing whatever you tell me, but... Listen, if I'm going out there, I'm going prepared. If you got a problem with that, you can fuck right off. Sandra gave me a frustrated look before she mumbled a whatever and we went on our way. So, what kind of horror are we up against today? Vermin? Beast? Humanoid? D-class. Presumably a parasitic type. Fucking fantastic. If there was anything I hated more than any of the other monsters out here, it was parasites. I always had, but after that shit show at the daycare... I always hated encountering them. The signature's origin is about two kilometers away from here in the city zoo. The place is put under lockdown as we speak, and all personnel is under order of evacuation. Lockdown? Evacuation? You said it's a D-class. <sighs> it's under Article F-57B of the Codex that we're to evacuate any public areas in which an incident occurs. Fuck the Codex, I thought, but didn't say it. Yeah, but don't you think this is a little... I began, but my voice trailed off. There was no way I could discuss anything with this stuck-up bitch. As I stared at her now, I saw she wasn't wearing any armor and carried no weapons. Yo, lady, you sure you want to go out like that? She eyed me curiously. What are you talking about? No armor, no weapons? You got a death wish? Sandra gave me a condescending smile. I can handle myself, Exterminator 7D11087. Anyway, today I'm only here to observe how you handle the situation. Great, so I get to do all the dirty work while you sit back and enjoy the show. Her answer was another sigh. While we made our way into the zoo, Sandra took out her phone again. Visitors have been evacuated, the staff's been told of an emergency, and has been accounted for, except for one person, that is. Shit, I cursed. You know anything more about that? Sandra shook her head. I cursed again. It meant we most likely had to handle some sort of infected freak who was causing havoc around the zoo. As we continued on our way, I took out my close-range scanner. The thing was acting weird, and I soon found more than one signal. I knew what that meant. Subhosts. The fucker must have already infected some animals and created a cluster. That's the real danger of a parasite type. Once those fuckers have found a suitable host and taken over its body... They infect other, nearby life forms to create extensions of themselves, all under the control of the host's body. My eyes were glued to the moving positions in the close-range scanner when Sanders stopped me. I looked up and saw she was pointing at something ahead of us. It was the battered remains of an animal. I couldn't even tell what it had once been. 
Sandra went to check on it, but I stormed right past her. Exterminator 711087. We don't even know what... It's Dylan, by the way, and we got no time for that shit. That thing's out there, and it's creating a cluster. With that, I hurried on, my eyes on the close-range scanner. I saw three, nope, four signals, but there was no guarantee it was all of them. I heard Sandra curse behind me before she came after me. We don't know what we're up against. How can you just... Doesn't matter what we're up against, does it? We've got to take the fucker and its cluster down. As I ran, I noticed more animal carcasses around us. For a moment, I caught something ahead. It was a shadow of a tree, but it was gone before I had any chance to see what it was. I guess it already knows we're here. Shit. A moment later, I realized the missing person couldn't be the host. His battered remains were right in front of us. The only thing that showed he'd once been a human being was the now bloodied shirt with the zoo logo on it. Ahead of him, I saw what we were up against. The bent, open bars of the monkey enclosure left no doubt. Fucking hell. Alright, where are you, fuckers? I hit the close-range scanner once more, but before I could even have a look at it, I heard the twisted, screeching yelps of a monkey. I saw four, five, shit. Way too many. In a moment, the gun was in my hand, ready to blow them away, when I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. One of the creatures was right above Sandra. Its fingers had turned into ghastly little claws, and its mouth was wide open, revealing a row of sharp little teeth. When I saw it descending upon her, I moved by instinct. Sure, she was a bitch, but damn, I wouldn't let those fuckers kill another person. My body collided with hers, and she was thrown out of the monkey's path. The creature landed right on top of me. Its feet got a hold of my arm, and I barely avoided it as it tried to scratch my eyes out. It screeched as it sunk its teeth into my protective armor but his jaws weren't strong enough to penetrate it. Grinning, I got a hold of it and smashed it into the ground in front of me. One shot of the gun was enough to finish off the beast. Behind me, Sandra had gotten back to her feet, cursing heavily. Yet, I didn't turn around. The rest of the monkeys stared, first at me, then at her. I grinned. Those fuckers knew I was covering her. Exterminator 7D11087, what are you doing? She asked as I stepped in front of her. Shut up! You've got no armor and no weapons. They'll tear you apart in seconds. Just stay back and enjoy the show. She protested, but I didn't listen to her anymore. Instead, I focused on the beasts in front of me. They were fast. Way too fucking fast. I hit one, then a second one, but the rest quickly retreated. They were waiting for another chance. I tried to hit them from afar, but those fuckers avoided all of my shots. Guess I gotta lure them in, I said with a grin. I put the gun away. Now then, why don't you come and get me? I called out, but they didn't come any closer. I took out the combat knife. A damn parasite might control them, but I knew one thing. An infestation is always a symbiosis, especially with animals. Their instincts always remained. In one swift motion, I got a hold of a dead monkey, rammed the knife into it, and started cutting it to pieces right in front of their eyes. They didn't like that one bit. Yeah, you like that, don't you? I called out to them. As if on command, they rushed me. Shit. No time for the gun. I threw the remains of the first beast, toppling it over, but another one was right on top of me. I felt its claws getting a hold of me, but before I could do anything else, I rammed the combat knife into its head. By now, the rest had arrived as well. I made quick work of a second one that tried to come for my face. The combat knife went through its body like warm butter. I was covered in gushing monkey blood, and for a moment I was blind. I could feel one of them, or better, its claws, as it tried its best to work its way through my protective armor. Cursing, I shook my leg while I rubbed blood out of my eyes, only to see another one jumping me. Its claws tore over my cheek before I could finish it. That's another three down. Two more to go. The one on my leg went down quickly enough. Where was the last one, though? Shit, don't tell me. Yet when I turned around, Sandra was unharmed. I dropped the knife took out the gun, and scanned the area. Where the fuck are you? A second later, I saw it. It had made its way into one of the other enclosures nearby, and before I could take it down, it vanished inside. Uh, you gotta be freaking kidding me. I cursed when I saw the monkey had already made it to the animal inside. It was a rhino, of all things. Even worse, it had wasted no time. Its claws had dug into the rhino's head, and a multitude of tendons had already pushed into its body. It was the freaking host, and it had just created another sub-host. The glassy, bloodshot eyes of the rhino focused on me. I saw its body tremble. 
Its muscles twitched and pushed outward. A moment later, an ear-piercing shriek cut through the air. Sandra was near me, yelling, but I didn't understand a damn word. The gun was in my hand, but when I saw the rhino charging forward, I knew it wouldn't do a damn thing. It crashed against the wall of the enclosure. Stone and concrete exploded outwards. All right, not good, not good at all. I screamed as I ran. Shit, I didn't have long. With each passing moment, it got closer. Finally, my hand closed around a small piece of metal. There you are, I thought before I threw the grenade behind me, right into the path of the symbiotic abomination. The thundering explosion threw me from my feet. I tumbled forward and came to a stop half a meter ahead. When I turned around, I saw nothing but giant chunks of meat. The beast had been obliterated, and I knew the parasite with it. That's what you get, that's what you fucking get! I screamed at the remains beside me. I turned to look at Sandra, who stared at me open-mouthed. Told you I'd get the job done, I said with a grin on my face. At that, the look on her face changed from disbelief to anger, and then to outright rage. You think that's getting the job done? First, look at the destruction you caused. Second, that rhinoceros wouldn't have been infected if you'd handled the extermination with proper diligence. Why didn't you focus on identifying and exterminating the main host right from the start? What the hell? You're yelling at me right after I saved your sorry ass? No thanks for saving you? Nothing at all? That thing would have torn you to pieces if not for me. She didn't like me mouthing off. As she tore me a new one, screaming and belittling me like I was an utter idiot, my thoughts drifted off to a better time. A time when I was working on my own. Fuck monsters and fuck this bitch. Let me reiterate my words. Fuck this bitch. With bitch, I mean Sandra. Obviously. After we'd made our way back, and she'd had enough of belittling me, she got right back into contact with headquarters. Wouldn't you know it, she told them all about my reckless and less than stellar performance. Her words, not mine. Once that was done, she started on the preparations for the move to the new apartment. I've got no idea how she scored this place so quickly, but I guess money isn't an objective for headquarters. At least when higher-ranking personnel is involved. This new place was massive compared to the cramped little shithole I used to live in. Still, I miss the place. The move was exhaustive. Not only because Sandra arranged the entire thing in her usual manner, which meant she acted like a massive bitch. No, she made me do all the heavy lifting because of one fucking joke, calling it our lover's nest. Tell you what, I'm done for the day. Sandra's still busy talking to headquarters and setting up all that fancy computer and uh, infrastructure shit she said we'd need. I couldn't give a single fuck about any of it. But at least she wasn't getting on my nerves, at least for a while. As I mentioned, I hate parasite types. Yesterday, we were lucky enough, and the fucker only infested animals. When they infest humans, though, things can get real ugly real fast. Especially when kids are involved. I don't like to talk about that day two years ago, but... After yesterday, the memory's fresh again, and it's... It's eating away at me. To say things got out of hand would be an understatement. It's been the worst fucking day on the job. Hell, things got so bad, I'm lucky my employment wasn't terminated. You can guess what termination would mean. The day started off as business as usual. I got a call. I was informed it was a parasite type, and the signature was transferred. While the size of a cluster and the number of subhosts an organism can create is limited, every subhost still means one more dead person. Here's the worst thing about parasite types, though. The change to the hosts isn't often visible. A person might look and act entirely normal while their brains are slowly being devoured and the insides of their bodies are being transformed. At the zoo, we were lucky enough for the parasite to attack us right away. Guess it wasn't one of the smart ones. They often hide their presence and try their best to infect as many subhosts as possible while staying undetected. I've got some specialized equipment for that, of course, such as a specialized scanner or alchemaic contraptions to reveal and end an infestation. When I saw that the signature was located in the center of a residential district, I cursed to myself. If I was lucky, it was nothing but a pet. 
If I wasn't, I might look at a whole damn family. I went out with my usual equipment. A gun, protective armor, a handful of grenades I hopefully wouldn't need, and a few gadgets and contraptions to identify the host and any sub-host it had created. Once I was at the Signature's location, I knew I was in a lot of fucking shit. I rechecked the Signature data twice, hit the close-range scanner, but there was no doubt. It was a freaking daycare. I called headquarters right away and asked for confirmation on the signal. It didn't take them more than a minute to give me a positive. I told them what I'd discovered, but they were cold as usual. The location meant lots of potential hosts in one place, and I'd have to hurry for the infestation not to spread, if it hadn't already. Take care of the signature ASAP, Exterminator 7D11087. We will handle the rest. After the connection had been cut, I stood there, not even sure how to go about this. There were freaking kids in there. Finally, I went to the front door and rang the bell. The woman who appeared eyed me suspiciously right away. I guess I didn't look like a parent. No, I most likely looked like the picture-perfect example of someone who was up to questionable things. In as few words as possible, I rambled on that there was a need to check the isolations in the boiler room. The woman listened, but the frown on her forehead became deeper and deeper the longer I rambled on. Shit, this wasn't going well at all. I wasn't even wearing frickin' overalls. And I didn't have a toolbox or anything. Good going, you fucking idiot. She stated she'd make sure that my information checked out, tore out her phone, and slowly but firmly pushed the door back in my face. From the way she held onto her phone and stared at me, I knew she wouldn't call her boss. No, I was pretty damn sure she was going to hit up the cops. I cursed, and without knowing what else to do, I forced the door back open, pushed her aside, and got hold of the phone. She didn't like that one bit. She screamed at me and told me the cops were already notified. If I didn't want any trouble, I'd get the hell out of here. Shit. Sure, she hadn't spoken to anyone, but who knows, maybe all it took was a simple button to notify the cops. I prayed headquarters had already gotten into contact with the authorities. Then, while the woman was still screaming at me, I took a deep breath, reached into my pocket, and tore out my gun. Okay, lady, no more talking. One wrong move and I shoot. Her eyes grew wide. She started shaking, but was quiet instantly. In a moment, I had the parasite scanner in my other hand. I held it up to her and started the process. Within a few seconds, it informed me that she wasn't infected. Is anyone else working here today? I asked her, but I had to repeat the question twice before she nodded. Good. Call them. What? Why? What are you... I told you, no more fucking talking. Get them here right fucking now. She cringed a step back, but then she entered a room ahead of us. I heard her talk to someone in a quick, hectic voice. Oh, you gotta be... In an instant, I was at the door. Both women's eyes grew wide, and the conversation ended when they found me staring them down. The moment I motioned for them to come out, the one I'd spoken to before led her colleague outside, whispering something to her. The second caretaker was visibly confused, but when I held up the gun in front of her, she understood the seriousness of the situation. Scanning her body revealed the same thing. No infestations. You got any pets or animals here? Both shook their heads. Oh god, it had to be one of the kids. The kids were all inside the room. The weather wasn't nice today, so the caretakers had opted to play with them inside. Well, at least I knew where the damn thing was. Inside, I grumbled at the woman. Right, tell the kids I'm a doctor or something, and we're doing an examination. Neither said a word, but when I pointed the gun at them, they nodded. The kids looked up when they saw me. Most of them seemed confused, even scared. Well, I couldn't blame them. I sure as hell didn't give a friendly impression. All right, everybody. I started in the nicest tone of voice I could muster, given the situation. We're going to have a brief examination today. It's not scary, and it'll be over in no time. What are you... One of the caretakers asked, but a single glance shut her up again. Go over there in the corner. I whispered at them in a cold, hard voice. When they refused to move, my eyes wandered back to the gun in my pocket. This time, they moved. I could see them shuffle around and stare outside the window, most likely waiting for the cops to arrive. I didn't have time to worry about that, though. Instead, I took out the parasite scanner again and scanned the kids one by one. 
The goal was easy enough. Find the infested kid, grab it, rush from the room, and exterminate the parasite as quickly as possible. Once it was over, I'd hit up headquarters and get the hell out of here. All I hoped for was that fucker hadn't created a cluster yet. No, I prayed it hadn't. The parasite scanner felt heavy in my sweat-covered hands. I was on edge the entire time, and I could tell the caretakers were as well. They had no clue what I was doing, but they sure as hell didn't like it. Worst, however, were the kids. They might not understand what was going on, but they knew something was wrong. I couldn't wait for this to be over. Just when I was about to scan a little girl, one of the kids screamed up. His arms and legs shook, his muscles twitched, and a second later I was sure I'd found the host. My god, Marcus, what's going on? One of the women called out and rushed over for the little boy. Without another word, I pushed her aside and restrained the boy. Then I got out an alchemic contraption and poured it down his throat. It would scramble up his insides, cook the damn parasite up, and make it abandon his host. It wasn't how I wanted things to go. This was nothing but nasty. But I didn't have any other choice. The second a parasite revealed itself, it knew it was in danger, and would do anything to infest as many subhosts as possible. As the contraption took effect, the boy's body convulsed in my arms. Bloody froth foamed at his mouth, and I waited for the thing to abandon its hosts. My hands were closed around the gun in my pocket, but none of that happened. The boy's body went limp, but no parasite showed up. Oh, shit. Fucking goddamn shit. One of the women was right by my side, screaming and tearing at the boy's body to get him away from me, but I didn't give her any attention. That little boy had been a sub-host. Nothing but another puppet the real parasite controlled. By now, the entire room was in a state of sheer and utter panic. The kids were screaming and retreated to the back of the room, huddling behind whatever furniture they could find. All of them except for the little girl from before. She showed almost no emotions. She went through her movements mechanically. It was clear she tried to copy the behavior she saw all around her. At that moment, I knew I'd found the real host. The gun was out, and as I pointed at her, her eyes met mine. They were empty and inhuman. What are you trying to do, mister? The thing asked in its best imitation of the shaky voice of a little girl. Ending this, I spat, but when I was about to pull the trigger, one of the caretakers was upon me. The gun clattered from my hands as she tried her best to get on top of me. Don't you dare! Don't you dare! She screamed. It took me a single moment to restrain her, but that was all the time the thing in front of me needed. The girl's arms were up in the air. Her hands were spread apart. The muscles in her body twitched and contorted themselves, and a net of tendons pushed out from her hands. The gun. Where's the fucking gun? In a panic, my eyes darted around, only to find it in the hands of the other woman. She was clutching onto it, but her eyes were glued to the horrible abomination that had once been a little girl. I rushed her, tried to tear the gun from her hands, but she was frozen in shock. With a second thought, I knocked her out. The hands holding the gun went limp as she keeled over. These few moments, however, they'd been enough. They'd been more than e-fucking enough, I realized. By now, the parasite had gotten hold of half the kids in the room. Some were on the floor, shaking. Others were still being infested by the thick, long tendons that pushed their way out into their mouths and down their throats. The rest were still hiding and rocking back and forth in terror. The woman I'd restrained before was out of it and stumbled toward the little girl. Sophie, what's going on? What are you... I heard her mumble. Get away from her! I screamed, but I could do nothing else. More tendons burst from the little girl's body. They dug into the woman, threw her, and a second later she fell to the floor, dead. I knew what it was doing. It had no use for her. No, it only wanted the kids. Right at that moment, in a state of utter rage, I pulled the trigger. I emptied the entire clip into the monstrosity in front of me until what remained was nothing but a tattered mess. The original host was down, and many of the other kids had been infested. They'd become nothing but mindless sub-hosts. Even if you kill the original host, there's no hope for them. They've already been turned into monsters. The only difference was that the sub-hosts weren't able to spread the infestation further, and were mindless without the original host. Still, these were kids. Yet I could see the first of them getting to their feet. Their bodies had already changed and they were ready to come for me. 
What I did next, I'll never be comfortable sharing. And will never be comfortable thinking about. At times, this job fucking sucks. At others, it's nothing short of gut-wrenching. Once I was done, I chased the remaining kids outside, pulled the unconscious caretaker from the room, and threw a flamer inside. No other way. I had to make sure everything in this damned room was gone. When I walked from the building, I was stunted and shaken. Tears were streaming from my eyes. The area was swarming with police and worried people. In between, I could see headquarters agents in their dark, inconspicuous suits. They came for me the moment I exited the building. They told me a lot of things as they escorted me from the premises, but I didn't remember a single thing. What happened that day was ruled a gas leak. When a caretaker had lit a candle to demonstrate something, an entire room went up in flames. The caretaker and all the kids in the room were killed. Overall, almost half the kids present at the daycare died. The whole thing made big news despite headquarters trying their best to handle the situation. There were questions and way too many of them. Parents wondered about the supposed gas leak. Others mentioned the police had already been on the way before the explosion and someone reported suspicious people in the area. Headquarters had to handle a lot of paperwork and I'm sure they had to pay off many people to get it all covered up. A mere two days later, I was confronted by an adjudicator. Headquarters had analyzed the entire incident and my procedure of handling it. There would be a thorough investigation of my abilities and my mental state. She admitted, though, it was an unprecedented case. and In the end, I was pardoned. The situation hadn't been fit to be handled by what they referred to as a low-ranking exterminator all on his own. They should have evacuated the building and the kids should have been isolated from one another before I arrived at the premises. They wrote an entire fucking protocol about that day. A record of my failure. And made it into a textbook example of how not to do things. And that was it. No word about the kids, nothing at all. They became nothing but another statistic. A number that was noted down and stored away in headquarters' vast archives. For them, it was nothing but business as usual. Even if things had gotten out of hand. I don't know how long it took me to get over that incident. No. To be honest, I don't think I ever did. Ever since I started this line of work, uh, ever since I was little, I don't dream a lot. Most of my nights are nothing but a dreamless sleep. If I dream, though, during the few nights I do, I'm right back there. Right back in that room, surrounded by screaming, and dying kids. I watch myself pull that trigger again and again and again. Until nothing's left but deafening silence. Fuck the monsters. and Fuck the days you become one yourself. A new, beautiful day in this shitty line of work. Today started out pretty much normal. If you call being woken up at 6 in the morning by an angry, nagging bitch normal. Turns out Sandra needed my help once more. It was to set up all the new tech and to sort through all the equipment she'd ordered. Within a couple of hours, she'd transformed our new apartment's barren living room into a nerd's wet dream. She'd set up a server, two state-of-the-art PCs, and a giant row of monitors. This would allow her to analyze massive amounts of data and any signature we'd stumble upon. Why we needed all that shit? I've got no clue. Even worse, I didn't get to play with any of those shiny new toys, of course. No, I was tasked with sorting through and storing away all the fancy new gadgets, equipment, books, tools, and god knows what else she'd had delivered. I just put away another box full of flasks containing a strange purplish liquid when Sandra called out to me. Exterminator 711087, we've got a new signature. It's a C-Class, beast type, get ready, we're leaving ASAP. I called up to her and had a look at the monitors. They showed a map of the city, and I saw the signature was located near the outskirts in an industrial area. Nothing was there except factories and warehouses. Got ourselves a beast type there? She hit a few keys and zoomed in on a patch of forest to the east of the industrial area. It's likely that the forest animal got exposed to some 
external influences and mutated, Sandra explained. Is it moving? Has it attacked anyone yet? I can't get any detailed information on the creature, so I assume it must hide somewhere, most likely underground. However, that might not be the case much longer. I nodded and went to get ready. Ten minutes later, we were on our merry way. The moment we'd made it to the area, Sandra stopped me. All right, Exterminator 7D11087. This time, I don't want to see any unnecessary actions. You'll follow my orders, and we'll do things by the book. Understood? Sure thing, I answered. As I looked at her, though, I saw once more that she wasn't carrying any weapons. Hell, she wasn't carrying any equipment at all. This time, however, I knew better than to say anything. Good. Once we make contact, you're on standby. Today, I'm going to handle the extermination. It's simpler and more efficient that way, considering your lack of... finesse. When I heard that, I couldn't keep my mouth shut any longer. All right, lady... How the hell are you going to do that? You're not even carrying any weapons. As I told you before, I know how to handle myself. She said, giving me the slightest hint of a smug smile. I was about to go on, but seeing her expression, I didn't care anymore. If this bitch wanted to get herself killed, so be it. Let's scout the area. The signature indicates the creature is somewhere near the northern edge of the factory grounds. No sudden actions or anything. We're just two normal civilians. You want me to hold your hand? Maybe... We could pretend to be a couple. Might work better than just... The angry glare she threw my way made me drop the subject. But I couldn't help but grin a little to myself. As we made our way past the factory grounds, Sandra's eyes were glued to one of her shiny new scanners. We were getting far, but so fast we saw nothing resembling a hiding place. As I assume, the signature indicates that the creature's hiding underground. Most likely in an old maintenance tunnel or an underground parking lot. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's take care of this fucker. Sandra sighed. Since I'm in charge, we won't do anything reckless like that. What do you suggest we do, then? We're going to cause a distraction that will get everyone out of the area. Once that's done, we're going to lure the creature to the abandoned warehouse nearby. With that, she held up her scanner and pointed to a location to the north side of the factory grounds. I listened, but I couldn't help but be annoyed by her stuck-up attitude. Sure thing. What sort of distraction do you have in mind? Do you want to walk up to people and... We'll raise the fire alarm. That way we'll get everyone to evacuate the area for the time being. You'll be in charge of that. In the meantime, I'll confirm the creature's current location. Jesus Christ, why do you have to make everything so goddamn complicated? Can't we just go and... Exterminator 7D11087. She cut me off. You've caused enough trouble over the past month alone. My analysis of your work shows you're prone to anger issues use excessive firepower, and cause unnecessary damage to both your surroundings and headquarters equipment. Your general cost of operation exceeds that of other, more professional exterminators by... All right, fuck it, I get it. So I hit the fucking fire alarm, you go find the creature, is that it? She stared at me in annoyance before she nodded, but handed me another one of her shiny little gadgets. A jammer. They're bound to have security cameras. Use it before you enter the premises. We can't risk having your activities being recorded. I shrugged and pocketed it. Well then, I guess I have a fire alarm to raise. I said in an over-the-top, upbeat voice and went on my way. God, I hated this woman. Sneaking into the factory was child's play. You might not believe me, given my latest series of misadventures, but I'm not half bad when it comes to getting into places I'm not supposed to be at. Avoid a group of workers here, crack open a door there, and I was in. Then I activated Sandra's little jammer and began my search for a fire alarm. Once that was done, I did my best to walk down the factory hall as nonchalantly as possible. Hopefully no one would bother me, but if worse came to worse, I would pretend to be a customer on his way to the sales department. Finding a fire alarm wasn't hard, a factory swarming with the things. The important part was to set it off without being seen. I made my way down a hallway, and wouldn't you know it, one was right down at the end. A quick look back showed me no one else was around. With a single, swift motion, I cracked the glass and pulled. Sirens went up all over the place. The added confusion of a failing security system should do the trick. As quickly as I could, I made my way back outside, and I could already see the chaos erupting. Wouldn't be long before someone figured out that nothing was amiss, and by then we'd most likely have baited the creature to where Sandra wanted it to be. I pulled out my phone and hit her up. 
Found our little friend? Get to my location. I'm transferring as we speak. It's hiding in an underground maintenance area. It took me about a minute to meet up with her. I could see the small downward ramp she was waiting at and an old rusty gate at its end. The moment we got closer, I saw the gate was ajar and had been pushed open by force. Bingo, I thought. Sandra cross-checked her scanner once more before she nodded towards me. She reiterated the plan once more, and then we entered. We inched forward bit by bit and made our way past rusted boilers and giant water tanks. It wasn't long before we saw the creature. The thing was huge, much bigger than I'd imagined. It could only mean one thing. It must have snuck in here while it was still mutating. Now it was down here to bide its time and grow. As I stared at the dark silhouette ahead of me, I guessed it was at least twice my size. Shit, this could get nasty. But it hadn't noticed us yet. All right, fucker, I thought as I pulled out my gun and pressed the trigger. If I was lucky, I might take care of things right here, right now. The moment the bullet hit, the creature stirred and pushed itself upward. It was even bigger than I'd thought before. The size of a small bus. I pressed the trigger again and again, but it didn't seem to do anything. For a moment, the creature didn't seem to understand what was going on. Then, a pair of glowing, bloodshot eyes focused on me and it let out a deafening roar. Shit. I think we should... I started, but broke off. There was no hint of Sandra. I was alone. Where the fuck did she... I didn't get to wonder any longer, because right at this moment the creature stormed in my direction. Without looking back, I dashed toward the entrance. That goddamn bitch! She told me we had to lure her to the abandoned warehouse, so she must have gotten there already. She left me behind as bait. As I ran, chaos erupted behind me. I heard the crunching of metal as the creature crashed against a boiler, followed by the explosion of one of the water tanks. For a moment I pulled out my gun again, shot at the giant looming shadow, but the thing didn't even react. Shit, what the hell were we supposed to do against something like this? Grenades, I thought, and I'd already closed my hand around one of them. Then I remembered where I was, right below a factory. If I threw one of my goodies here, chances are I'd blow up the entire fucking complex. Finally, I'd made it to the doors, then I was on the ramp, and then I stormed into the direction of the abandoned warehouse. A second later, the metal gate exploded outward. Another angry growl followed. When I looked back once more, I saw how close the thing was and got a good look at it for the first time. From the body, the snout, and the tusks, I could assume that the bloated abomination behind me must have been a wild boar once. No time to think. With every second, the creature closed in on me. I sprinted toward the warehouse, but was stopped by a giant fence. My eyes darted left and right, but I found no gate. Damn it. In an instant, I jumped onto the fence, pulled myself upward, and climbed. I'd barely made it to the top when the creature reached it and crashed right into it. The fence was obliterated, and I was sent flying. Somehow, I managed to land on my feet, but pain shot through my legs, and I crashed to the floor. Over here, I heard Sandra call out to me. Fucking hell, help me, you goddamn... I didn't get to finish the curse. The thing was right behind me. There were only a few meters, then one. Then the entire area was basking in blazing white light as the flash grenade exploded. The thing was disoriented and growled in anger. It continued its charge blindly, barely missed me, before it charged in a different direction. I fought myself to my feet, felt the pain in my legs and knees, and knew I hadn't come out of the fall unscathed. I half ran, half limped to where Sandra was. What the hell are we supposed to do against something like this? I screamed at her. Can't use any grenades, can we? In front of us, the bloodshot eyes scanned the area. They grew wide when it found us. I saw muscles twitch below the skin and tusks grow. Shit, the fucker was still changing and mutating right in front of us. Another deafening roar followed. As it opened its mouth, I saw a gorging maw filled with brick-sized teeth, a disgusting black tongue, and something else pushed outward. It was half a dozen huge, heavy tentacles. They were pulsating, stretching, and then opened up and shot something into the air. A disgusting yellowish-green liquid flew right in our direction. Watch out! I screamed at Sandra, who still hadn't moved a single step. For a second, I reached forward to push her out of harm's way, but then I felt myself being propelled backwards. When I pushed myself up, I saw Sandra hovering a few inches off the ground, and her hair stood up slightly. The liquid crashed against an invisible wall about a meter ahead of her. The moment it hit the ground, the concrete oozed and bubbled. Acid, I realized. 
My eyes, however, weren't resting on the acid, and neither were they resting on the abomination in front of us. No, I was looking at Sandra. This bitch. This goddamn bitch. She was one of those damn freaks. One of those psychomancers, or whatever they call them. The creature roared, charged forward, but came to a halt after only a few steps. Its mouth opened again, the tentacles pushed outward once more, but with a single wave of her hand, Sandra closed it. I could hear the thing screeching in pain, and saw the muscles of the jaw tightening before they tore apart. The creature tried to push itself forward and pushed against Sandra's invisible barrier. I saw the muscles in its legs tighten, but then Sandra's eyes grew wide. The air was filled with the sickening sound of bones breaking and flesh tearing. A moment later, the front legs of the creature gave way. It struggled, pushed onward, and on its hind legs alone, but another wave of Sandra's hands obliterated them in an instant. Sandra hovered closer. She made the smallest of gestures, a final, minute wave of her hand, and I saw the creature twitch and convulse. Acid oozed from its jaws and ate away at flesh, bone, and skin. The acid glands are gone, and it's unable to move. Please, finish the creature off, Exterminator 7D11087. For a moment, I just stood there and stared at her with an open mouth. Then, as she came to a rest on the floor, I nodded. In a trance, I stumbled toward the pitiful creature. Its eyes looked at me. I saw what remained of its jaw twitch, but nothing was working there anymore. All had been destroyed. I pulled out the gun and finished the thing off with a few shots right into its head. Then I limped back to Sandra. You're one of those psycho... We prefer the term mentalist. She cut me off with a slight smile on her face. All right. Mentalist, then. Now tell me, if you're able to take down a Class C organism like that, like it's nothing, why the fuck was I needed here? You weren't. It was merely a precaution. Beast, vermin, and humanoid types are no problem for a trained mentalist. There's, however, a chance that an organism can have abilities similar to ours, or that the extermination lasts for a prolonged period. The hell are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that even though we mentalists are far more capable than other lower-ranking exterminators, her eyes came to rest on me, at times even we can't handle things on our own. It's a rare exception, though, she added with a condescending smile. As I stood there, I could only continue to stare at her. Great, so headquarters hadn't just sent me a freaking bitch. No. They'd sent me a fucking mentalist of all things. Way to go. Way to make me feel completely fucking useless. <sighs> fuck monsters and fuck mentalists. You've just heard part one of three of Fuck Monsters by Rene Wren. If you're interested in supporting the author and you want to buy the book, this story is also available as a novel on Amazon. Please check out the description below and support the author on Amazon if you'd like to read more of this work. Thanks everybody for watching. Today's video was supported by patrons like Mark from Earth, Crimson Muse, Joy Burton, Diane Showers, Mark Zuwall, Cheryl James, Pick Your Sticker, Teddy Dog, Clue 404, Mamakado, Dante Kincaid, Zarin Ray, Angela Donovan, Blair Ann 50, Devin Kyle, Timothy Baird, Ajeti, Burt Turner, Bajani Espinal, Michael Pierce, Big Joe, Carrie Harkonnen, and LaDonna Spivey. If you'd like to help support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Jordan Group Horror. As a patron, you'll get access to bonus videos and content, you'll be credited at the end of every video going forward, and if you decide to stay for three months, I'll name a character after you which will be featured in the next Hollow's End story. Characters have already started appearing in stories, so check that out if you're interested. Links to join are in the description. Thanks everyone for listening. Please like, subscribe, and comment to help the channel continue to grow, and see you again next time at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great night.